welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, <clears throat> and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple. The mastermind behind Shades of Vengeance, and a man who is no stranger to these hallowed halls. Now coming back with a improved version of Era Balam. The one and only... I think your microphone went a bit wrong there. Uh, oh. Hello everyone, <laughs> I'm, I'm back. Uh, you can't really keep me down for very long. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that we haven't lost Milgra. You still no, there? I'm still here. I'm right, still uh, here. Your, your microphone went very weird at the end there. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Discord has had some issues getting along with my mic at, at times. That just happened no to be one of them. Oh. But yeah, as you say, mm -hmm. I'm back with Era Balam. Mm -hmm. um, it's a new and improved version of the game. And when the game originally came out, um, it didn't really get the attention I think it deserved because of the time of year it came out. Um, and that's a whole other story, which I'd be more than happy to talk about. Yeah. But um, I think your Balam got missed by a lot of people who really would enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I've got one super fan who, uh, you know, was completely converted over and 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 b uh, began to believe totally in Era D10 as a result of playing Era Balam just the one time. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think Irabalam maybe got missed by a lot of people. It's a very diminutive book. It's A5. It's only 40 pages long, 42. Mm -hmm. uh, at least the original was. Uh, the new one is eight pages longer. Yeah. Uh, with new content. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. I think, I, I, th I think the only time I really dedicated a significant amount of time to talking about it was the first time... I had you on, and that was really a grab bag of a bunch of stuff because I had come in somewhat late, we? somewhat late to the party. So I had to touch a little bit on that, a little bit on Alamo, a little bit on Consortium, and so and some other stuff. And absolutely, obviously, what obviously when you're trying to cover like four or five or six, or six different RPG RPG um, entries in one system. Some things are going to get more attention than others. Yeah, you, you, yeah and, and uh, again, Irabalam being one of the smaller entries in the series, um, it, it's easy to skip over, and, and that's the reason that I wanted to come back. You know, it's it's been six years since I released it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to come back, and I wanted to look at it again and improve and expand it. Um, I didn't have lots that I wanted to change. In fact, I didn't want to change anything. What I wanted to do was add a lot of material that I'd sort of had separately or in my head that I'd never that I'd never been able to fit in a small pocketbook. Yeah. Now, I be I believe with this you've you cited um there's three games that you cited as I'm not sure if you said anything because <laughs> I think your microphone's gone again. I'm very sorry. Um, I'll just say some more stuff. <laughs> uh, Irabalam mm -hmm. uh, began. I, I mentioned a moment ago that it began uh, at a, in a slightly odd time of year. Um, well, oh, yeah. uh, the truth is that a lot of Kickstarters that are in sort of July, August, September, even struggle a little bit because people are outside enjoying the nice weather, or uh, they're really just getting their kids back to school, or what, what, whatever it is. Um, those three months tend to be a little more dead than than other months. And Era Balam, the original one, was a response to a Kickstarter prompt, uh, Project of Earth. Mm -hmm. And it was around the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 launch date anniversaries. It was the 50th anniversary, I believe, mm -hmm. of the launches uh, about six years ago. And I wanted to participate. I, I try to participate in all of the Kickstarter prompts as best I can. In fact, I think the first prompt I've ever seen which I've not been able to respond to was actually the one that they've got going on this July, uh, which is about romance novels, and it, that's just not, not my thing. Um, 
So, Erebalam, I, 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 you know, the prompt was do something that relates to outer space and, and, and who we are as a planet and so on. And me being me, I, I took the darker route of, well, we're, we're complete screw-ups, basically, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, as a species out in the galaxy. Uh, we can't be trusted with anything. And uh, in reality, we're likely to screw everything up. So what I did is I had this concept of a probe that landed on an alien planet and blew up. Mm -hmm. um, and it destroys the um, power plant for this alien planet. And as a result, a lot of the aliens die, but they send an armada to go and find who attacked them. And they come across humanity in this remote star system called Balam. Well, remote star system which features the planet Balam, the star system is actually known as HX7371. Um, it's a human colony. Um, when, the, when the aliens arrived, We'd colonized many of the planets in the in the solar system, but they actually bombed most of those into oblivion. All the settlements they could find, um, because they viewed it as having declared war. And humanity now is is putting together fighters from scraps. Salvage is a thing that matters. Um, being able to uh, uh, avoid and and hide from the alien fleet, which is enormous. Mm -hmm. um, they put together these one-man fighters that they call paladins that fight for humanity to try to keep the really the main remaining city on Balam mm -hmm. alive. Um, and uh, yeah, this is this is all about being one of those fighter pilots and going out into the black and exploring planets and 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 dodging asteroids in solar systems and fighting alien spacecraft and negotiating with humans who maybe don't want to help you because you even landing there has exposed their potentially exposed their position to the aliens and so on mm -hmm. yeah that's, can... that's really what Irobalam is all about yeah I can get that and there there were three games that you mentioned on the Kickstarter as points of as points of inspiration that I wanted to dig into and kind of what aspects drew drew you in on that so I'm gonna start I'm gonna start backwards and go and go forwards. The first one I wanted to touch on is Elite Dangerous, which I'd say is one of the more clear cut um, cases. Yes, Elite Dangerous is not is not yeah, it's it's not a hard leap. Um I wanted that feeling of a one man fighter. Mm -hmm. Actually, um I don't know if you know, but there was actually an Elite Dangerous role playing game. Oh I know, I've got I've got it in my archives. Um, and uh, actually, I, I ran into the creators of it at Dragon Meet one year here in the UK. And uh, we, we exchanged a copy. I gave them a copy of Balam, which I'd come up with completely separately. Mm. And they gave me a copy of Elite Dangerous. Oh. So, um, you know, they, they, they took one look at Balam and said, wow, this is great. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Funny thing is, I've got two TTRPGs in my library that are Elite Dangerous. and um, They're trying to do Elite Dangerous in tabletop form. I've got an official one and a let and a unofficial one. <laughs> not, not including Irabalam, of course. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but but I wanted that 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 you are in your fighter and you, you know you you are you are exploring space and 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 it's big and it's terrifying and you are in trouble and so on. Yeah. Uh the next one next one to bring up on the list is the comeback kid of the last de of the last decade. Um, no Man's Sky. So again, you know, it's 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 got that feeling of I wanted Ear of Alam to have that feeling of exploration to it. Mm -hmm. Um now I wasn't I, I still haven't, even in one point one, I'm really sad to say, been able to include, you know, traveling to other solar systems and exploring new planets. Mm -hmm. But there are definitely planets, moons and, and, and various places that people don't go. And uh, there is definitely this this feeling that you can land on a planet and 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 be the first person who landed there. Mm -hmm. I I do rec I do recall um I do recall jeez why is his name escaping me the guy the guy heading Hello Games remarked that he that the kind of sci-fi he wanted to draw upon was more of the pulpy stuff from like this from like the seventies and the and the sixties rather than 
what um, I, what I've come to call large men with screwdrivers. Um, I don't remember who um, I don't remember who came up with that term, but it's been such an effective term reg to refer to refer to the more technical end of yeah. sci-fi that a lot of people think is the default. I I, I definitely think that Era Balam could be played in either way. Mm -hmm. Um, you you could absolutely do it with a really technical approach, and oh, you want to attach a booster to this asteroid, that will mean this. You, you know what, I, I go a bit more pulpy, and, and I'd even say sort of cinematic, bending mm -hmm. the rules of physics yeah. uh, when I run this game. Um, one of the games I, I ran, uh, someone, uh, they, they discovered a, a thing they wanted to destroy, they went to the nearest asteroid field, they stuck some boosters on some asteroids, and I was like, okay, good on you, nice one, I'm going to let you get away with that. Now, when I write up the session, I'm not going to let anyone get away with that, you only get away with those things once. Yeah. <laughs> Well, haven't you heard the expression? It's it's not a war crime if it's the first time. Uh, uh, no, I can't say I've ever heard that expression. Actually, <laughs> but obviously the next one on the on the list is freelancer, which uh, I think I think people have a, a a different look on freelancer now than they did than they did back then. But there there it was still. A certain amount of infamy with a freelancer back back then. Oh. Did they? I mean, I, I I have to disclaim here quickly. I only played the offline version, and I didn't. I I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. Oh, it what, it what? was gr it it what had to do. Mean? Oddly oddly enough, it's in, it's a parallel with no with No Man's Sky in the sense that. Um. You had a you had a lot of over promising because it was talking of doing a living economy and a bunch of other stuff, and you've probably heard, again the another expression eyes bigger than your stomach. Yeah, uh, I mean, okay, that's <laughs> fair enough. You see, I picked it up and I had no expectations. I'd never heard of it when I picked it up, so I didn't know. Uh, but it, it so happens that I grew up basically an area without internet. Mm -hmm. Um, so I didn't like in the era where games like Freelancer came out. I didn't have broadband. Yeah, there was dial up, and 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 that was it. Freelancer and... was a bit divisive at the time. It's got I, the I mean, offline no, no. version has gotten a bit of a better reputation with time, but I, in a roundabout way, I've seen that kind of thing as a, as a harbinger because obviously the man behind it would later go on to make star, would later go on to develop Star Citizen, and I'm. Pretty sure yeah, I will be I... at retirement age by the time Star Citizen is fully finished. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but um, yeah, no. Uh, I I I played Freelancer as completely blind to and unknowing of these expectations, and and as a game for mm -hmm. the time, it was brilliant. It was really good. It yeah. was extensive the story was good and engaging the only thing i got annoyed about was the fact the story ends where it does and you never you never find anything out and there was never a sequel yeah uh, and a lot of a lot of that does have... and interestingly one of my first introductions to uh jennifer hale as uh voicing a main character mm -hmm. and cuz she played junko zane yeah and of course the peace de resistance on this list is invoking Homeworld. <laughs> um, Homeworld has been one of my favorite games for a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I was I was there when it was Game of the Year. Mm -hmm. um, I was absolutely blown away. As, as a lifelong sci-fi fan, to see Homeworld 1 for the first time was just mind blowing. There were there were no words for this game that actually captured what it would be like to fight in space. Mm -hmm. It just it's not perfect. It definitely has flaws. I understand. I'm not pretending it's the perfect game or or, or anything like that. But it captured the taste that I always wanted to see and. You only ever see two D stuff. Um, you only ever saw two D stuff in that in that yeah. era. And Homeworld 
just I I I, I was so blown away mm-hmm. to how by how beautiful it was, by how meticulous the the design for the ships was and and all of the rest of it i i adored homeworld it was mm-hmm. it 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 is still one of my favorite games of all time yeah um absolutely adore that game um did you yeah. ever play um cat did you ever play the cataclysm expansion yes absolutely yeah that is I will always. That's. It's funny that it's that that's not technically a horror game, but it. Yeah, but but it's it, <laughs> the name of it now. It's called Emergence. Now. Yeah. So, um, because apparently, uh, when World of Warcraft came out with Cataclysm, there was a a, a bit of a bust up. Yeah. To understand it. Yeah, that's um, kind of how that's kind of how that went. So it went with Emergence, but. Yeah, it changed its name, but um. I mean the the homeworld cataclysm, as I still refer to it, mm-hmm. um, because that's that's what it says on the on the CD that I've got, you know. That and it's a um, more it's certainly a more it fitting great. name. It is. It really is. Um, I, I I I loved it. I thought it was a brilliant, fun mm-hmm. expansion. You know, that was originally just going to be like DLC for the original game. That was the yeah. original plan for it, and they it it it's it's literally a sixteen mission game. Where not only did they do a lot of the things that they did in Homeworld, they they tap into this new approach of the last boss, for example. You've got to use your um, uh, the corvettes that are combined from the two mm-hmm. smaller ones to zap it, right? And you yeah. have to disable engines. You aren't you aren't just shooting this thing. You can't just shoot this thing. It's not possible. You have to zap it. So that it stops and then get it, mm-hmm. and and using those mechanics that they'd already built into Homeworld was just brilliant. Then there was Homeworld Two, and uh, I don't know if you know, I don't know how closely you follow Homeworld. Homeworld yeah. Three literally just came out. Yeah, I um, I have. I've some... heard some, I've heard some disappointment about the online. Mm-hmm. I've heard the single player was was very good and very satisfying. Um, uh, I've get I've got a. Mixed. I've got a mixed approach on both, uh, and while it's not in space, while it's not in space, I always, I always um tell people uh, not to deserts s- of Karak. not yeah deserts of Karak, because uh, one one of the uh, things that I always that I find fascinating with something like Homeworld is this juxtaposition of doing doing a ver- doing a space um, approach, but with a lot of aesthetic that you'd see in the Fertile Crescent. Both with with music, with some of ki- with some of the designs, with some of the um, naming conventions, and so on. Uh, also, the gardens of Kadesh. There are no no. There are many games out there, but none of them have the gardens of Kadesh. <laughs> uh, well, you 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 just you enter the gardens of Kadesh and you go. I don't. There are not words. This is beautiful. It's beautiful. It's just. You know, a, it's just a fleeting and then, and then exactly it's that it's that for a moment there everything's perfect and you are just surrounded by resources and you know it's too good to be true mm-hmm. but the first time that you play it you have no idea what's about to happen yeah and it's just stunning mm-hmm. um it was so well executed those two missions gardens and cathedral of kadesh Mm-hmm. Just so well executed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Homeworld has, as as listeners might have picked up by now, Homeworld has always been a really, really big deal for me uh, mm-hmm. as an inspiration. Uh, it was an inspiration for Era the Consortium, but I was not able to go to the level of depth with Era the Consortium around what it's like to fight in space. Mm-hmm. I'm very proud of the space combat rules in Era the Consortium, but it doesn't put you in the cockpit yeah. in the same way. And Balam and I is, v- is very much you're, you're in the cockpit, the um, the Paladin is your per- is, pre- is pretty much pretty much your everything. It's going to be the main way you're interacting with the with the world around you, with the world, correct, and and you know, um, in homeworld terms, I would call the paladin 
probably a probably a Corvette. Like it's very big for a fighter relative to Homeworld. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, we've actually been unlocking stretch goals, and, and this is a great opportunity to talk. Yeah, talk about them because I'm going to be adding at least four new mm-hmm. alien spacecraft into Balam. Yeah, and that means I'm going to be. I'm 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 going to be adding something between a mothership and an alien fighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe I'll add some drones. Maybe I'll add you know really small stuff. Maybe I'll add some some uh, uh, cruisers. You know, ha- how would an ion cannon frigate mm-hmm. shoot people? You know, it's the possibilities are really broad here, and I've never had the space to do it. But imagine being a group of fighters who are deciding whether to target the engines or the weapons or both or the maneuver engines or whatever on an iron cannon frigate that strictly fires forwards mm-hmm. you know you're, you're not having the the uh homeworld cruiser thing here where they're all turreted ion cannons and can fire in any direction no imagine actually taking on one of those and trying to avoid the weapons mm-hmm uh, because and and you've taken down the the maneuver engines so that that's actually a possibility. This yeah. is something that Irabalam really, really accounts for and really allows you to go ahead with as a you know as as a GM you know building these kinds of ships. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited for it and and to have unlocked two stretch goals towards that already. I'm really excited. Yeah. Now with that in with that in mind, given. We're still dealing with the with the region HX um seven three seven one. Uh, when it com- when it comes to that re- when it comes to that region, do you pl- with this with this expansion do you or um not expansion re- refinement I should say do you plan on expanding some expanding some of the details when it comes to that area? Absolutely, I've done exactly that. Um, one of the things that I've added um is actually a complete star system map. Mm-hmm. As well as looking at rewriting and expanding the um, descriptions for each of the worlds that you can land on, I I can I can cer- I can certainly get get the vibe for that, especially since with the with the loop with a lot of games that do have you landing on worlds, a lot of it is either exploration based or um re- or research based. Hmm. Uh. Um. Because, because, well, a ship a ship can't sur- can't survive on pilot skills alone. <laughs> you, you're no, get, indeed. You're gonna need um, fuel. You're gonna need a- you're gonna need ammo. Um, especially if the especially in a system that's hostile, you're definitely gonna need wow. ammo. Absolutely, uh, ammo is is very important in Irapal ammo, I would say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. But. There now, I I do recall in the original there were um there were three there were three modules that were kind of the or could be considered the core class. You can't see it, but I'm doing massive finger quotes. Um, and that being yeah. fighter, I mean, siege, look, and um, salvage. I, I made a joke when Balam came out that actually I was basically writing D and D classes mm-hmm. into a yeah. you know, in, into a science fiction role playing game. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 in a sense, there's some truth to that. Um, it it they are they are very heavy in terms of their impact on your character and the way in which you're gonna behave. Yeah. Um, and there are five modules. Yeah, yeah I forgot. I forgot from. support and um sc- and scouts. My my bad yeah. on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. There are- is yeah. it going? Is it going to stick with those five? It's it, it or are there going to be some expansion? Since you talked about one of the stretch goals, possibly allowing for a mothership-like ship. Um. So the the mothership-like ships, they're all going to be on the alien side. I'm not going to be giving players a larger ship. Um. I think it. I think something like that would damage what era Balam is it feels like mm-hmm. and and also the the world building that exists you know where uh where where you know it, there really is this desperation among humanity and the only the only resources they have are to build these paladins yeah but they've been really effective 
thanks to the ingenuity and skill of the pilots. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I'm not being going to be giving that to humans. And I also, uh, I've not, there are some other modules that I've thought about including. And again, we'll have to see how far the stretch goals go. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I've, I've not ruled that out at all as a possibility. Um, I, for now, in the rulebook, there are still only the five modules. Uh, and, and just take, to take people through it just briefly, um, the fighter module uh, means that you have to get very close to your enemy. But if you do, you're quite likely to turn them into Swiss cheese relative to normal normal weapons. Mm-hmm. Um, the siege module uh, gives you a long distance laser cannon. Uh, very, very long range. And uh, however, it can only fire once every two turns. So you have to pick your moment to fire. Yep. The salvage module launches three small salvage drones. Uh, they can actually be destroyed. So you have to be a little careful about when you, when you launch them. Um, and they can heal uh, friends or yourself. And they can also uh, even even like rip things apart. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're good for salvage. They're good for um, and you can even salvage an enemy ship in flight. Thank you, uh, Homeworld, for that idea. <laughs> um, me of the me of the minimum twenty salvage corvettes. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's my strategy for playing Homeworld one. The yeah. support module it turns the paladin into both a mine layer and a mine sweeper. Mm-hmm. So uh, you you can lay a minefield of significant size in just a few minutes, um, and uh, that they're, they're attracted to the ships, uh, Galaxy Quest style. If uh, if anyone likes that movie, uh, I... your ship can drag mines. Yeah, and Lord, and then the scout module is inspired by uh, the Normandy in Mass Effect. Um, Stores the heat in in specially made heat sinks, mm-hmm. uh, rendering it almost invisible to anyone searching for it. Yeah, um, it can be used very effectively for sneak attacks, but uh, you can only use it for a limited period of time. P- pretty similar to Normandy. I, I sort yeah. of looked at Mass Effect and went, "Oh, I, I want to do that." That and there's always going to be, given ever since the ever since the days of submarines, there's always been a certain appeal to the st- to the stealth ship in that regard. How we see that Absolutely. with we see that with modern day planes with the amount of stel- the amount of stealth tech that's been used in planes for about I'd say about 40 years 50 now, years yeah uh, inclu- including the Nighthawk which is one of my absolute favorite um, plane designs ever <laughs> even though it was absolutely hated by engineers at that time because of how angular it was uh then again, the, then again, the same people who hated it made the whale, which is one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. <laughs> but I can def- I can definitely get that ca- that kind of appeal. Uh, yeah, and, and and the thing about the thing about this that makes it very different to classes mm-hmm. is you can switch it if you don't like the way it's going. You can just switch it out. It's a module. It comes mm-hmm. out, and you replace it with another thing. That's yeah. how it works mm. in Era Balan. And that's why, you know, despite these feeling a little like classes, and I understand, and some people find a lot of comfort in classes, but the thing that... The, the main objection I have to class-based systems is always, but what if I don't like it? Mm-hmm. What if I get to level three and I decide this isn't for me? Do I have to start again then? Or roll a character up to level three that's a new character because you're so defined by what your class is? Uh, you know, if you if you were to play... Well, I'm going to pick on you, in fact. If you were to play D&D and play a monk and then you get to level three and you decide you don't like it, what what you, you basically... You have to roll a new character because your character makes no sense if it's not a monk that's one of the things that really right? that's one of the things that really leads into the ch- the choice paralysis problem i've talked about on multiple streams where Absolutely. somebody's asking the question is my choice now going to screw me over three four five sessions down the road and yeah it- i mean I've, I've just so i was a neverwinter night sky mm-hmm. and uh, because of baldur's gate three baldur's gate one and two are, have been on sale 
-hmm. so I picked them up. I, I never played Baldur's Gate. I'm, I'm aware of the, the general tendency that if you liked Neverwinter Nights, you wouldn't like Baldur's Gate and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, and I never played Baldur's Gate as a result, but I'm, I'm more than happy to give it a go. The thing is, I, at the beginning, had to choose a class, and I'm going, right, but what you're asking me now is, do I want to be a fighter mage multi-class? Now. You're asking me that now. How the hell do I know? I don't, I don't know. Especially how, since how I know? Gish characters, which is basically what that is, and any for and a lot of forms of multi-classing, are very are very much um a, a very much an archetype that is fraught with traps. It is like walking into a minefield, because if you don't do things precisely right, you are gimping yourself. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that is something I've been very very vocal about over over the years that it that we have plenty of characters in fiction that do martial and and magic especially in a lot of a lot of eastern media even a lot of manga a lot of a, a lot oh, of I've video games souls, even. Mm -hmm. i've yeah. just been playing elven ring mm -hmm. for example and uh that's uh my my go-to is a uh, uh well in elven ring it was uh, uh an int build with a katana uh, the, yeah. the, the int based katana I forget what it's called now moonblade or something yeah and within and because because of that it shouldn't be that it shouldn't be that hard to do the the gesh archetype it's a, it's a case where it's it it becomes hard because of um unforced errors as as, as I yeah. put it yes I I agree with you it's that's one of the things I've been thinking about very hard recently in in game design terms because as you know I'm working on a on a Dark Souls inspired game. Yeah. And um, I've the funny the funny thing is is that I've I um I did a I did a stream not too long ago talking not to, to just to wrap up this tangent. I did a stream not too long ago talking about Dark Souls 5e and where I said that it doing straight up classes was a mistake. Because one I, could argue that these Souls games have classes, but they're not classes. They're packages. Exactly. It's That's not the case. It You can decide, after getting 50 strength, that you'd like to now build your int and be a sorcerer as well. Yeah. Or vice versa. Right? You can suddenly go, no, 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 no. You know what? I want to use the lightning spear because it's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to build up my faith now. I'm going to put my dexterity on one side. And you can do that at any time during the game, yeah. right? Without respecking. I'm not talking about a respec here. Mm -hmm. Respec job here. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about right. I'm a dex player. I've got a katana, whatever. Uh, right. I just came across this spell, Soul Spear, and it sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and cast away with that. Right. I've got to have 40 int to do that. So sorry, dex build with with growing katana strength. I really want this. I really want this magic ability. I'm gonna hold my katana in one hand, my uh, catalyst. They call them in Dark Souls, mm -hmm. don't they? In the other yeah. hand, and I'm just gonna cast away and be able to hit things as well. And how how are you classed in Dark Souls? You you are not. It is a classless system. Plus, some um, when it come when it comes to the issues with classes, stop me if you've heard this story before. You've played more than your fair share of any of the Diablo games, right? Oh, uh, uh, a couple of them, yeah. So, stop me if you've heard this before. You go through a dungeon, you kick all kinds of ass, you get you get to the loot, you find a real nice, real sexy-looking weapon that you can't use because you're not the right class. Because it's only for the barbarian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that it... I mean, yeah, yes, there's going to be other opportunities to find something that will fit, but that feels... That doesn't make it any less painful. It, it does. You, you're sat there going, but... I don't even have a barbarian playing this game. Why do I have this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Man. it's only good for sale. Oh my god. Yeah, I, I played, I played a lot of Diablo two. I, I I platinum to Diablo three. I haven't played Diablo four yet. Oh, uh, um, I've played Diablo four for a bit, and that and then I realized this is a very very good advertisement for Path of Exile. <laughs> I, I I feel like. Diablo 4, from what I've heard, is too expensive for me to buy it right now for how good it is. I probably will play it because I'm sort of curious. Mm -hmm. um, but 
yeah, I, I, I don't play online multiplayer very much. I try and avoid it uh, because I play so much, so many role playing yeah. games online. Mm -hmm. um, usually, computer games are my time. They're 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 ed time rather than playing yeah, online I, time. I can get I can get um, that. So I don't play a lot of online, and and also I did a lot of years of World of Warcraft and and various other online games, and and I just I think. I think I just need a bit of me time usually when I want to play a, play a game. Yeah, so I, I don't very frequently play online, and I understand. You know, uh, I I I still get adverts for Diablo Four about how, uh, you know, it's the best online multiplayer game. Blah blah blah. Okay, cool. Um, I've I've heard things, but I have no opinion of my own yet, so I don't like to comment too much. I probably will buy it. Mm -hmm. Just I'm going to wait for it to come down in price a little bit. I think yeah. sixty quid, fifty quid is still a bit steep. For a game that people are saying is not great, yeah, um, I think it's a bit steep. Oh, and f well, there, well, there's a severe la there's a f severe lack of monks, which is cert which is certainly a detri certainly a um, selling point but against <laughs> monks in, in in number two either. But uh, the no, assassin but we had we had the, had the assassin, which was yeah, the assassin did my job. And in three, oh, I forget. It's been a long time. Since three I've had played. a full on monk. It had a monk. I probably played the monk then. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, I, I I generally play a monk. You know, I'm definitely in the right place being in the monastery. Yeah. Um. I I I you know I'm I'm playing Baldur's Gate three with my wife who uh, wanted to be a wizard. Mm. Uh. So she's a dragonkin wizard, and yeah. I am a I am an elven monk. Mm -hmm. and... Uh. I, I I play monks. That's what I play. I I do the monk thing. Yeah. Oh. Uh... If I if I were if I were a less kind man, I'd have you in court for gimmick infringement. <laughs> but I that's will... okay. I don't play online, so no one knows except you. Yeah. <laughs> so th therefore, you've got plausible deniability. Yeah, but... uh, you can't prove it. Yeah. But with that, in, with that, in, with that in mind, um, when it comes to when, I know that you're referring to this as a 1.1 of Era Balam. Um, do you plan on when the full thing is out? Do you plan on putting like a um, like a change log no notation or something like that to highlight what has changed from 1.0 to 1.1? You know, I hadn't actually planned to, but it's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. um, that that's not a bad idea at all. I actually quite like that idea. Mm -hmm. Um, I hadn't really planned to because overall I've only sold about I don't know, hundred copies of Irabalam. Mm -hmm. It's never been like the biggest game, and um, I, I I feel like I don't want to let those people down. So actually, I I, I really like that idea. Um, like like I said, Irabalam. I think it just came out at the wrong time. It's it's already more popular on this Kickstarter. Than it was when it first came out. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I actually really like that idea, and 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 that would mean that I don't have to leave leave anyone behind, mm -hmm. uh, which I really don't want to do. Yeah, I, I can get that. I'm, I'm not saying it's going to be this that it's going to be this massive change log thing. Change log thing could be just no, a no, no, no. Thing it, it'll just be going, I've changed? added this and this and this and this and this and this, mm -hmm. and I've edited this because it's a bit dodgy, and I've I've fixed that. You know, it'll yeah. be it, it'll be like a list of maybe twenty bullet points, like one A four page max. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not. Yeah, it won't be big. It's mm -hmm. not a lot of things. But it's very important things that I think really make a difference. Yeah. And with that in mind, I th I think you s the original was 40 pages. I think you said that this one's going to add about 8 pages for a total of 48, if, I'm, if I've got it right. Is, that, is it still going to uh, be around that size, even with the um, stretch goals? Yeah, here is the, um, here, here is the book. Uh, I'm showing it to you on video, which obviously mm -hmm. your listeners can't see. But uh, yes, it's very similar. With stretch goals, what I'll do is very similar to what I did with Era Kaiju. There'll be a separate booklet mm -hmm. uh, to include the stretch goals if we reach that physical point. Yeah. Um, to include those stretch goals rather than affecting the book itself, because the book has everything you need to play. You know, I don't, 
I don't want anyone to walk away from this thinking, oh, well, it's only good if we get, like, eight stretch goals. Mm -hmm. No, the book, the book has everything. It's it's everything you need. Um, what I can do is give more. Yeah. There's always more I can give. You know, speaking with my creator hat on, I can always give you more. Mm -hmm. And I want to. I want to give as much as I possibly can to anyone who wants to play this game because it's really a great game. It's good fun. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that means that no, the stretch goals won't affect the page count because that would imply that what I was trying to sell you in the first place wasn't fit for purpose. Yeah, and I wouldn't want to imply that because it's not true. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, what what you'll see instead is additional materials become available as a result of the Kickstarter stretch goals, mm -hmm. and you can have those digitally. You can pay a little extra uh, for a, a, a paper booklet if you would like. Uh, that will be the same size and shape, so it can go right next to your your Irabalam on the shelf. Mm -hmm. um, just whatever works for you, really, in your you, the way that you play. Oh yeah. And what would you be shooting for as far as a release window? At the very at the very least for the digital version. I know the print. I know when it comes to printing, that always presents its own challenges. Uh, I would expect to release this within two weeks of the Kickstarter ending, speaking mm -hmm. digitally. Mm -hmm. um, it's done. I, I literally just showed you the book. Mm -hmm. um, it is finished. Uh, it is ready. Um, it's actually been ready since December, but uh, it, it's taken me a little while to get around to getting it up on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. um, I just I was feeling kaiju more earlier in the year, and, and I wanted to... One of the things that I do is I release what I'm, you know, I release and work on what I'm feeling at the time. So if I'm feeling Kaiju, I'm going to release Kaiju and Irabalan can wait. Mm -hmm. I've got more games than I will probably release in my entire lifetime. Um, I've actually got a card game up there, which has been sat there since before COVID, which has never had its day on Kickstarter yet. Mm -hmm. um, that's not because it's a bad game. I just haven't released it. Yeah. Um, it just hasn't been what I felt. And and so far this year, you know, up to up to the point where obviously your balance come out, um, I've had a lot of things I wanted to do. I wanted to get empty shell out the door. Kaiju, obviously. Um, I've been, you know, I've been working hard, but it's getting the right thing out at the right time. So Irabalam, it, it the time was right for me. It was ready. The next project that I want to do was not ready, mm -hmm. but there's no reason to hang around and wait. Uh, Irabalam is ready. It's ready for you guys to read and enjoy and play. Um, I've actually got one of my GMs on the server running Irabalam uh, on, our, on our Discord server. Uh, he's going to run it next week, I hope. Mm -hmm. um, to, you know, let, let people see how how it works. Um. Yeah, I, I, I. It's ready. It's done. He's he's been given the one point one rulebook so that he can. Uh, he is a backer. In case anyone is wondering, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not just uh, uh, rewarding him for running the game. Uh, okay. He is also a backer, and um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I want, I want this game to be out there as soon as possible. I want to move on. Irabalam's a great game. I've got many more things to come. I've talked with you about several of them before, mm -hmm. like Era Friction. Um, I've talked about Era Soul Mist. Both of those games are approaching ready. Um, I I'm ready to move on from this, and I don't I don't put out a new Kickstarter when something is not delivered. It's it's not. I don't think it's okay to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna be delivering this awesome game it's got 14 days to go now uh as of uh recording this conversation of course um and i i i i, I don't see any reason why it can't start going out in like 16 days from now once i've got the reward surveys from people mm -hmm. i get i gotcha and i will be looking forward to seeing that come to fruition but with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness once again. 
And it's always a pleasure, Mildred. Mm -hmm. It's always a pleasure. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. I as appreciate I often, that. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And, of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy Thank the you. madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the Good Brothers, present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody!